Howdy neighbor, how is your garden growing? Today, what we're gonna be doing is some spring cleaning in the garden. Yeah. So if you're looking to Took get- the words out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. So if you're looking to go get inspired and motivated to get out in your garden and get it tidied up, or if as always, you just wanna hang out with me and Ben, then, <laughs> then this is the video for you too. Okay, let's get going and let's go see what's, let's go figure out what messes we wanna clean up today. Let's do it. Yay. Okay, so what do you want to work on first? Walkway. Walkway? That way we can walk to get to do the other stuff. <laughs> a super logical, Ben. <laughs> I try. Yeah, <laughs> and I appreciate the logic. So, okay, so you want to work on like edging the walkway? Yeah. Okay, how about I, I'll start weed whacking the <laughs> paver pathway. <laughs> now, I guess here's the question though with the edging. Yeah. Um, Cause like, especially over here. Yeah. I'm gonna be taking out a lot of blanket flour from just Yes. Are you okay with that? Or is there something you want to do to it first? No. No to which part? <laughs> so what I would like to do with the scraps from that section, so yes, just take it back to the sidewalk. It'll okay. look funky, I know. But then what I want to do is I just want to take the scraps and I'm going to chuck them in some areas for future reseeding. And I would just work on weed whacking all the frog fruit off the path for right now, just because it's can't find the path. Except for the part that I did in the other video. And also, speaking of that other video, if you want to know what tools we're using and want to like see the shenanigans of setting it up, slash you're inspired to buy them for yourself. It's a good one. Uh, I will put at the end which tools I'll put in the, and I'll put link in the description for those specific tools if you're feeling so motivated and inclined. Were you all screaming at the phone for those who did see the other video that that plan was a terrible plan? <laughs> First problem already. So apparently um, Ben figured something out that that plan's a terrible plan with the edging and the cleaning of the walkway because... It uses the same tool. Yeah. So, new game plan. <laughs> um, so you're gonna do the walkways. Yep. I will not do the weed whacking of this section. I can go use the hedge, hedge trimmer trimmers. and I can finish cleaning up this hedge that is behind our fine community because, you know, it just needs to be done anyways. But that's only gonna take me like, a minute at most and the edging is going to take you longer. Well, I mean you could edge the top of that fire bush too. I just feel like the hedger is just going to make a mess of it. So maybe when it's you're... It's only a few cuts. So maybe when you're done uh, but, yeah, I can edge just... trimming this, if you wanted to do the saws all to get those carrot woods out over there and I didn't then... want to have to go diving into a bush right away. Oh, okay. Because it's like I got to go under the bush to find the basic. We'll do that. Okay. Okay. Break. Break. How 
How's it going, Ben? This is tough. That looks like you literally dug a trench. Pretty much. Deep. How how deep is that? How that deep? that looks crazy deep. So the sidewalks to here, and this stuff has grown. But like, look how deep the dirt is. That yeah, is. Yeah, it's a good probably at least two inches, maybe three inches above the, the walkway. Sidewalk. Which yeah. is legitimately crazy. Uh huh. But I mean, I guess that's some soil building for you right there. That is. Because I thought, and it's hard to tell with the frog fruit, that like I felt like the ground felt like it kept getting higher and higher. And we had dumped a bunch of mulch on here. But mulch breaks down and then it becomes like just as flat as the ground around it after a while. But like the fact that like that's like really deep. <laughs> yeah, very deep. So, one thing I found just doing this a little bit so far is that. Um, the edge, the edger has gotten most of the frog fruit where I'm trying to get it, but because the soil is higher up than the walkway, I'm finding that some of the, the plant's roots are just kind of going down from where it's at and the edger is not really getting it because it's going parallel to them. So I'm having to still kind of go through here and just pull some uh, manually. Okay. Yeah. Fun. It's very fun. A lot this is of... heavy. <laughs> well. You know what, this will help the frog fruit project in the back just really take off because there That's is right. so much even dirt in here. Yep. <laughs> just chuck it and then uh, yep. something will eventually take off in the back. Yeah. Cool. So I'm going to keep going on this. Yeah, I am going to actually grab the uh, blower really quick. I'm going to blow off the little hedgy pieces that I just did. And then I'm going to get the sawzall and I'm going to start cutting some of this Mexican petunia and um, some of the other like trees that are trying to grow through this bush so that we can just know that that area is pretty taken care of. Because that was one of the problems with the landscapers is they would just like chop the tops of like trees that are trying to grow and um, they weren't actually like pulling them. But because it's an oak, if the oak's already this tall, like that means we've got four or five feet in the ground and I'm not going to be able to pull it. So I'll just have to cut it at the root or basically at the ground level and we'll just have to knock it back enough times and it'll eventually die off. Now, with cutting all this Mexican petunia, one of the things that if you do have an invasive species in your yard, like a Mexican petunia, that wildlife is using, it becomes kind of like a balance of when you take stuff out because it is doing something for wildlife. It shouldn't be the permanent thing that you want to do something. But what you don't want to do is if you've brought wildlife in, <laughs> just be like, psych, I took all your food and shelter. So having other things. So why I didn't really want to ever deal with this, like cutting back the flowers on that, is it was one of our early bloomers for the year and I did see some of our bumblebees using it. I wanted to wait till we had things like sunshine mimosa um, and like Stokes Aster, ironweed and stuff like that, that I knew the bumblebees and the carpenter bees go to blooming before I cut back the majority of the blooms. Because what you, yeah, cause that would be like not nice, right? So, and that'll be also the game plan. And that's also been like the game plan long-term is like when we're ready to do that section is we have enough food in other areas, other places for animals to shelter so that if we do lose some of them from taking out stuff in the area, you know, we've built up the population in a lot of other areas. So that is something to think about when you are dealing with an invasive species is have you done things to help get them through the transition? Something to think about. Okay, onward. <laughs> Okay, so just looking at how much time it's taking us to do all this shenanigans, what I'm thinking, because we're new, we're new to the landscaping maintenance game. Yeah. We're definitely new. Um, is we just focus on this bed and that bed and get that done today. And then next weekend we can focus on 
all that. Cause it's like a lot. Cause when you have a hot mess, it goes slowly. Yeah, when you've gone this long without doing anything, it takes a little bit longer, which is not bad. Like, you know, honestly, we got, it's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. It's fine. <laughs> so what I'm thinking is I still need to, I'm gonna prune the Cleodendrum Glory Bower a bit, just so it's not quite touching the gutters. And then I'm gonna move into doing like the variegated shufflera, getting the, oh my gosh, there is, <laughs> I wish I could show you, but there was a skipper on the camera here. That's just, just right on top here. Just on top of you guys, right on your heads, right there. That shows how much wildlife we got in this garden. Yep. Um, so what I'm thinking is, is like I'll work then on these shrubberies while Ben cleans up the sidewalk because it's like, a lot of plants uh -huh. and they're drying out quickly and we want to get them in the backyard so that they try to take off in the backyard and then we need to like actually clear the path to get to these three mm -hmm. raised beds because ha, 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 it's summertime and i need to plant something in them and then <laughs> <laughs> go figure so then i got fire bushes did i say fire bush already i don't know and then uh, you might have pride of barbados you did now and then a little bit of the uh jasmine but it's still flowering so i don't want to go too crazy on it but i do need to get it out of the gutters yeah and then next weekend, because we there is some bigger stuff, like we need to remove this entire papaya next week. Mm -hmm. we, there's just way more like, I feel like intricate work on the side. Oh, and yeah. so while it doesn't seem like- Brazilian it's, peppers everywhere. Brazilian peppers everywhere. <sighs> what else did I say? Oh, um, Virginia creeper all over the place, which is native, but it's you still- You saw bitter melon somewhere. I saw bitter melon, um, which is found- Wait, um, what was it? Bitter melon? Oh, I say, yeah, no, I do that. Uh, and then I saw, I identified some pokeweed, which while native, not, not gonna have it there. So we, and then there's just rouge plants and fire bushes that just like popped up all over the place that just, yeah. um, we want the wildlife, we want the native, but we want them. So we'll focus on that more next time because there'll be more hand pulling. So let's just knock out this section and I think then we'll call it. That'll be enough for today. I think that, yeah. But this is like, I think my sunscreen's gonna wear off soon anyway. Because it's less a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> What's going on? Okay, so you see my hand under all of this? Yeah. Uh, there's where the sidewalk ends, back here. Oh, that's the sunshine mimosa. Yeah. Oh, is that might be what this, that's got a much more aggressive root system then. Well, yeah, because I'm finding stuff like this. Yeah. Like this is thick. This is what the, this is what's causing the, the, the string trimmer problems. Yeah. Cause we've been bad. Oh, it's okay. They won't hurt you. I mean, but it's, look at how deep that's again. Like. All right. So where should I put all this? Um, so I noticed that some of the frog fruit's not taking off in the sandy areas. Um, it's struggling, but it did take off by the fig. So maybe just throw down like blue smulch around the fig, the mulberry, the calmondins. Um, because it'll give it more of a chance to think to take off because already, yeah. Ugh. So while I was trying to get rid of the palm tree that was growing inside of here, I found something really cool because I was like, there was this like really thick, weird, viney thing that was in there. And I traced it because I was like, you know what? I know one thing that grows out of this bush all the time is quirky stem passion vine. And the old landscapers, like I said, they would never go to the, like the root. <laughs> they would just rip stuff off the outside and never really get to like where things were coming from which when it comes to invasive species, bad. But when it comes to a native species that you actually don't mind keeping, this was actually good. So I'm gonna show you what like a really, really mature quirky stem passion vine looks like down at the ground. It's kind of, this is an old quirky stem vine that's been maturing for a really long time. That's what it would look like. So if you're digging around in shrubbery, trace that if you think you would like to keep some quirky stem. So now I'm gonna just hedge trim up this shufflera this is variegated shufflera. It's in a lot of y'all's yards. Just one of them standard landscape plants. And um, 
I'm not gonna worry about the corky stem. The butterflies will still get to it. It just it's around everywhere, anyways. And because we've allowed it to flower and fruit the last year, because last two years, because I told the landscapers, stop pulling it, because uh, it's good. Hence the reason we have so many Gulf fritillaries. So we have enough of it around. If I knock some of this back, it's not a big deal. Legitimately crazy. You too can have a sidewalk that produces soil. <laughs> so the string has become wrapped around the string trimmer. For safety, I have removed the battery. So the Ryobi quick switch string, maybe not so quick, maybe not so simple, or else we just totally misunderstood how to do it. But now it's all caught up on the machine. I don't know. We might need to call it a day because it is way past lunchtime. We haven't gotten this done yet. But we got all that done. That done. Those done. And that done. So that may warrant calling it quits and we'll just pick that up when we come to do this stuff next week. But while Ben works on that, the thing that was popping in my head as he was sweeping away all the dirt was that have you ever seen Moana, where the chief talking to his daughter, Moana, said, every stone we lay on here, like each chief puts a stone on the stack, which raises the island higher and higher. Kind of made me think about these native plants and ground covers, because it's like the more you plant this, you're literally raising Florida higher and higher. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, it's literally, our yard is inches and inches above where it used to be. And that's kind of cool. So while the struggle is real right now, inspiration, motivation, Get those native plants in and you can literally raise Florida. I wonder if your insurance would accept that. I'm like, oh, I don't need flood insurance. I planted a bunch of native plants. I'm like five inches sire now. We did it. Some stuff. We did some stuff. Yeah. We didn't get all the stuff done. And even the, the shorter list we didn't finish because technical difficulties and that's, that happens. It does. But hopefully they got motivated to go do hopefully. some spring cleaning on their garden or at least they had some fun hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed some of our shenanigans as you would say. Shenanigans. Um, but now it's time for us to go eat lunch mm -hmm. and maybe it's time for you to eat lunch or dinner or go to bed or have some tea for breakfast whichever it is you want to do it's time for us to say goodbye and if you're interested in seeing the shenanigans of setting up these tools check out this video right here or if you want to see the first time we use them and our initial thoughts overall check out this video right here okay okay i'll see you soon bye, bye. <laughs>